Okay, let's take another look at these questions Christians just can't seem to answer. Though we try and we try. And in the interest of, in the interest of time management, I will try to kill two birds with one stone. And I apologize for the violence of the metaphor, but I can't think of any other way to express that particular idea. So, let's take a look-see here. Question number three. Remember, these are, these are questions Christians just can't answer. This is going to be hard. What are your reasons for not being a Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, or follower of the many other non-Christian faiths? Hmm, well, okay. I actually have a pretty good reason for not being, for being a Christian as opposed to a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Hindu, or miscellaneous. Now, not, I'm not sure how many of you have heard my origin story. I've t t talked, yeah, origin story. It's, it's like a superhero story. Uh, my, my, how I became a Christian, I've said it on a couple of these, couple of these uh, shows on YouTube. But, let me say it in brief. Okay, so, I'm a nice young man, about 20 some odd years old. I meet this beautiful girl, and she's a lapsed Christian. Little do I know, she is a lapsed Christian. We move out to California, boy meets girl. We move out to California, uh, start a new life. Um, she is, unbeknownst, well, at this point it's kind of known to me, she's returning to the Lord. She's starting to practice Christianity again. And one night she says to me, I really want you to come to church with me and see this prophet guy. And I wanted to get out of work, so I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's go check him out. Now... Growing up, I was not really a Christian. Um, I mean, we were raised technically Roman Catholic, sure, but nobody ever expected me to adopt the tenets of the faith. Matter of fact, they would have been really surprised if I had. Nobody, nobody, you know, my, my dad kind of sort of believed in God and went to church. Uh, my mom was sort of a, not a radical feminist, but a feminist, a total like national organization for women. She was president of the Westchester chapter. I grew up in probably the most secular left-leaning town this side of Berkeley in the United States of America. So I was raised almost completely secular. Uh, barely, knew, barely knew the Bible, had almost no Christian influences on my life whatsoever. Um, so the whole thing was new to me. I went to the church that night with a complete open mind, not knowing what to expect, not really caring. As far as I was concerned, Christians were those, those, you know, they were those people who protested the last temptation of Christ. I had no real dog in the fight, you know, just wanted to get out of work, didn't really care one way or the other, but was curious, sure. Now, this prophet guy that night starts prophesying over me, and the Holy Spirit entered the room, so powerful, boom, just like that. Holy Spirit made Jesus real to me that night, 100% real. Um, now, I know you don't believe that. If you're an atheist, you don't believe that that was a real spiritual experience. That's fine, I accept that. But I'm just telling you, from my own point of view, from me, the participant in the experience, it was God himself came into the room and through the power of the Holy Spirit revealed himself to me that night with almost 100% clarity. I was completely transformed that day into a, into a Christian, you know, and I've heard somebody else talk about that sort of experience, and they said, like, had the same reaction I had. What? You mean it's true? <laughs> what, the, what the fuck? It's true? And, and, and put all these questions in my head, didn't necessarily answer everything on the spot. So what about Noah's Ark? How is that? Uh, I don't get it. But anyways, that night, as I say again, and I 100% believe this, God himself, with the power of the Holy Spirit, revealed to my heart that Jesus was exactly who he said he was, that Jesus was God. And from that moment on, I had been a Christian. Now, why am I not a Muslim? Why am I not a Hindu? Well, be quite honest to you, had I gone to some Hindu temple <laughs> and Shiva showed up and said, by the way, I'm real. I don't know what Shiva does. She does some weird dance. She's got like 10 arms or something. And go, by the way, I'm real. You know, you should, you should come to know me. I'd probably be a Hindu <laughs> if I had that powerful experience when I went to a Muslim mosque. If I, this, this experience was powerful and life transforming to the core. I went from Mr., you know, Thought he was cool, secular, like, alcoholics, 
smoke two two and a half packs of cigarette a day. Uh, stoner. Ah, was I a stoner at that point? No, not really. Weed makes paranoid. Wasn't crazy about it. Um, but I went from that guy to this guy, Mr. Christian Apologist, Mr. Holier Than Thou. Just in the boom, just like that. So I say it happened because God himself revealed himself to me that night. Absolutely. And I will stand by that. Now, I know you don't believe that, but the experience was real to me. Had I gone to a mosque and, you know, Allah showed up and said, Hi, I'm Allah. Worship me. I would be like, okay, I'm in. Yeah, I guess so. You know, yeah, it's weird to me too. I didn't think it was right either, but here he is. And look, it looks like he's real. I didn't necessarily go in thinking it was right either. It was the experience itself was real. That's why I'm a Christian, as opposed to a Hindu, Muslim, or whatever. Miscellaneous. Now, let's look at another question. Yeah, that tells that. I, I know. If you want to convert, you know, just sign up. I'll, I'll give you the papers. You can become like me. I know. I know. I'll convince you. You don't have to tell me. It was very convincing. I know you believe me. 100%. I know you're Christians now, too. I can read your mind. All right. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Everyone be quiet. I'm trying to read these stupid questions. Oh, no. They're good questions. Did I say stupid? I meant good questions. Did, that, did I say that out loud? No, these are great. Actually, these are kind of terrible questions. And what's disappointing about these questions, got to be perfectly honest with you, is these are some of the, like, these are the atheists at the top of the food chain. These are the, these are the smart guy atheists. These, these guys have all the cool channels, and they have all the, you know, pretty good. These are, these are the smart guy atheists. So these questions aren't that great, to tell you the truth. I could think of 50 better questions than these right off the top of my head. But that's neither here nor there. Let's see. Which else? What else should I answer? Um, what one was I going to do? Oh, so many to choose from. Oh, I remember. Where's the one about Doubting Thomas? Wasn't there one about Doubting Thomas? Or was I imagining that? Uh, it's probably Kyle. I bet you Kyle asked about Doubting Thomas. Oh, here we go. Number 12. Yeah, truth doesn't fear curiosity. Testing on doubt, which inoculates us against charlatans and scams. But if your beliefs stand up to scrutiny, then why is Doubting Thomas vilified as the bad guy for utilizing the scientific method? While the rest of the, the disciples are congratulated for following like blind sheep. Okay, ask like a true atheist. Uh, first of all, and I don't want to split hairs, but I'm pretty sure that he wasn't actually vilified in the Bible. I'll go look that up later. Pretty sure all I always said to him is like, blessed are they who you see and yet believe. Blessed are they who don't see and yet believe. So, Jesus is trying to tell him what? That people who need to have their faith completely and utterly confirmed beyond all shadow of a doubt, it is superior to be like a little child. And yeah, you can, you can say like Santa, believing in Santa is superior to that. Well, the question is, why? And the way the question that you framed it, you know, I don't think Thomas was using the scientific method. That's kind of a stretch. But let's, let's roll with it. Okay, so 